Hey YouTube, it's JCT from Team Execution here. Um, I'm going to be giving you guys a deck profile today on X Sabers. Um, sorry, I know you guys probably know that um, I do switch around decks a lot, but um, right now, this is sort of my way of figuring out how decks run, how to play them, and how to beat them. So, uh, without further ado, X Sabers. Oh, let's get right down to this. Um, my monster lineup, I run triple full home knights. Uh, full home knights is just really good right now in this current format. Um, he stops a lot of decks from going off, and overall it's just really good. Um, full home knight, if you attack your opponent's monster, that's in defense and destroy it. Um, I believe it's sent to the graveyard, right? Oh, so if uh, this card destroys a defense position monster your opponent controls by battle, just in general, it doesn't have to be removed from play. Uh, it doesn't have to be sent to the graveyard. But uh, if it destroys it, it special summons another saber from your graveyard. So, if your opponent has like a face down Tengu, you can attack, uh, special summon the second Volhome Knight and attack, or just special summon it, and then end your turn, you already have two cards that stun for the, your opponent's attacks. So it's really good. Um, three Volhome Knight's definitely a must in this deck. Next, I run three Dark Souls. Uh, Dark Souls is just really nice. Um, he gets around everything. Um, he sets up your plays majority of the time, but overall, he's just a really good card. Uh, something that should be run at 3 in this deck. Uh, being level 3, he goes with uh, Full Home Knight into High and Lay or into um, Barkeon. So, next card, uh, Double X Saber Emmer's Blade. Excuse me, X, X Saber Emmer's Blade. Uh, Emmer's Blade is just so good right now. Um, I like it at 2. I think 3 clogs too much because sometimes you're drawn to the third one that you don't need. But uh, Emmer's Blade, it's basically a tomato um, for XX Saber monsters or X Sabers. And uh, this card just it not only thins out the deck, but it can help you set up for your next for your play next turn. So, just really good. Uh, next, Double Faltrol. Uh, Faltrol, you search him out. I'd rather search this card out with uh, Dark Soul than a uh, than drawn to this card. I ran this card at 3. It seemed to be too much. It was really inconsistent. But overall, uh, Faltrol is doing pretty good at 2. Um, as most of you know, the Faltrol loop with uh, Rocky Gura, uh, I do not run it. So, do not ask me. Um, I am going to try it out, though. Um, I did playtest it on DN. It was pretty nice. Um, however, it's it depends on the situation. You have to have that card. You have to have a um, Faltrol in your graveyard right? and a Faltrol on the field. Um, in order for Rocky Gura's effect to go off. So, uh, it doesn't matter if Rocky Gura's in your hand or in the graveyard. It really doesn't matter. Uh, as long as it's special summon, um, Rocky Gura's effect goes off with Gotham's on the field. So, um, fall trolls. Um, next I run one Bogart Knight. Um, personally, I think two is way too much. Um, the only thing Bogart is good for right now is going into high and lay with, uh, Poshul. Uh, aside from that, Bogart really is not that great. Um, he's a 1900 beater, he gets over monsters, I know that. Uh, he kills Ryo, and 1000 defense is a lot better than Ryo anyways. But the only downside is you can synchro someone with him only into an X-Saber monster, to an X-Saber synchro monster. So, uh, that can prove to be a pretty big disadvantage at times, especially when you have this guy just in your hand, just him, and nothing else. Um, I would honestly rather have a Dark Soul in my hand than this guy. Um, just because Dark Soul is just more versatile. And um, the only time I would really summon him is if I'm trying to make a push, number one, or number two, I'm trying to make Synchro 7. Um, but without Soza, this card is pretty much garbage right now. Um, XX Saber Air Urbellum is just complete bullshit. Uh, level 7, 20, 2200 attack points. Anything can get over that. A level 5 Catastrophe can get over that. Actually, Catastrophe can get over a lot of things, but that's not the point. Um, Gaia Knight, the Force of Earth, can get over this card. Um, can get over fucking Orbellum. Uh, sorry for my profound use of language, but um, I just really don't like Orbellum because he's really not that good. And uh, without Soza in our meta, uh, Sabers are at a really big disadvantage, especially in the current meta, um, where Soza, where uh, Orbellum just really can't stand up to anything. So, uh, one Bogart Knight, that's all I'm running. Extra, I run one Air Bellum. Um, if Rescue Cat comes back, I will be swapping out my X Saber Bogart Knight for a Rescue Cat, and I will bump this card up to two. But um, Air Bellum is just really good right now. Um, he's basically a Reaper on Crack, 1600 attack. As long as he deals battle damage, your opponent discards a card from their hand. Um, this card is just really nice because uh, right after uh, after damage calculation, this effect kicks in. Um, yeah, uh, when it inflicts battle damage, so right after, right uh, after damage calculation. So during the uh, the damage step, this card just pitches a card from your opponent's uh, hand to the graveyard. 
uh, just really nice. Uh, it gets over the gores, but it can't it can't swap out Trag, but it can it can definitely kill the gores. Um, just really good. Um, I run double Pushel. Uh I do run the uh, reinforced truth build in my deck. Uh, it's really nice. I mean, overall, Pasha is really good. But uh, when he's on the field in faceable attack position, he gets really, really, really shitty. Um, especially late game when you're barely surviving on like 3,000 life points or like 2,000 life points, and uh, you have like that set warning. You got like 2,200, and Pasha is face down. Your opponent attacks him and ends turn. You draw into something that you can't synchro with him for, and you pass turn. Now. During your opponent's standby phase, you take a thousand points, obviously, which makes that dead, uh, which makes that face down solemn warning completely dead. So, this card is really horrible at game, but uh, overall, as a wall, it's better than Reaper so far. Uh, I just like this card a lot better. Also, it's Earth, so when I side, uh, side deck, um, I don't get hurt as much as my opponent does. So, double postural is really nice. And then for the hand traps, I run one Veiler and double Crow. Um, the reason I'm running Double Crow is because I don't have Max C. Um, I think Max C goes really well in this deck overall because it's just so good. Excuse me. But um, DD Crow, most most decks are running uh, are running cards that involve the Green Road right now, like Tengu Plants, Dark Worlds. Um, you see Frognark plays, um, and then you have the Wind Up Insectors that honestly need to get like fucking hit by the next ban list. Sorry. Um, and then you have uh, Malefic Skill Drain, excuse me, Malefic Gear Town. I swap out crows for that. Um, I I I swap out, I swap out my crows and I swap out my Veilers, and I run something else in place of it, because uh, DD Crow and Effect Veiler really don't go good against Malefic Gear Town. But like Junk Doppel, or like Tengu Plants, where your opponent relies on having like that spore or that glow bulb in their graveyard for their effects to kick in, um, can get pretty shitty when you remove them from play, especially with a uh, spore when you banish that target as a cost. You try special summon sport. I'll crow your monster, and then you get not only a minus one. Like you lose your, you don't just lose your lone fire, but then um, later on you can't reborn it. So your it forces your opponent to go to the levier, which means you um, that solemn warning becomes live, or that effect there becomes live. So uh, just overall, this is my hand trap for this current format. Um, I will be bumping effect there up to two when I can get a second one, uh, possibly three, because this card is just so good. It's also a level one tuner. And um, sometimes I can go into formula, so um, yeah, just occasionally. But that's it for the hand traps. And uh, lastly, I run one Gores. Um, Gores is just amazing in this deck. Honestly, this card is like a staple in every single deck right now, because not only is he so good, he's level seven. So if I summon that effect villain, I can synchro eight and grab my a Stardust or a Scrap Dragon, pop my token, and pop and just kill opponent's monster or their back row and just swing. So, uh, Gors is overall really good. Um, he's good against Chain Burn, because when he comes out, uh, your opponent usually has to knock him off the field in one turn. <coughs> oh, God, my throat hurts. Ow, 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 ow. Okay. Ow, that burned. Okay. So, um, Gors level 7. He's just a really nice card, 2700. Uh, it's a staple. I think that's self-explanatory. As far as what Gores does, so uh, one Gores. Now moving on to my spells. I'm sorry, this is going a bit slow, but I'm explaining everything along the way. Um, first you have the staples. This is, these are basically just staples. There's really nothing else I want to run. I don't run Saber Slash in this deck. Um, so you have uh, Heavy Storm, Super Dark Hole, uh, Book of Moon, Mind Control, and Reborn. Um, this is basically all you need right now. Um, along the, for the staple lineup. Um. Then you have your two uh, toolbox utility cards. I might bump up, um, which are Tada right here. Enemy controller. Enemy controller is so broken. Oh my gosh, I cannot emphasize how broken this is. Your opponent has a spirit reaper. Activate enemy controller. Destroy it. Okay. Next, your opponent has like a, t a tango in attack mode. Enemy controller. Put it in defense. Attack it. Full home knight. Affect special summon a monster and attack again. Um, ut enemy controller just provides so much utility in this deck. It's ridiculous. Um, and not only that, but um, you can switch your opponent's monster from attack to defense, or you can tribute your Dark Soul, take control of your monsters, and search in the end phase. It's really nice. Um, sometimes you can steal your opponent's monster and exceed with it. Uh, it's just a really good card in the meta right now. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be run in every deck, but it is definitely a great utility card, especially in Sabres. Might bump it up to three, but it's looking pretty good at two. So, 
Um, and then for the last of my spells, I run a triple MST build. Just in case, uh, my opponent has a set book of moon when I'm trying to make my plays go off. Um, I will MST their mo I will MST the back row. Um, I don't randomly MST unless I have to. Uh, let's say, like my trap stun goes through, or my trap stun doesn't go through. Like my opponent solemn judge, solemn use a solemn judgment on it because they want to preserve their back row. Okay, well I don't have a trap stun. What do I do? I have MSTs, so I'll use my MST. I'll hit it. I'll hit. I'll usually hit like their solemn warning or their bottomless trap hole. And then from then on, I'll go into high and lay, I'll pop their back row, they might have like a bottomless as a response. Um, but aside from that, they really won't have anything else. And my pl and, uh, high and lay's effect will resolve um, backwards. So, it's just really nice. Um, that's pretty much it for my spell and trap card lineup. Um, I don't think I have to go through uh, explaining the staples. So, moving on to the traps. Um, I run two Gotham's Emergency Calls. Gotham's E-Call is just so good right now. Um, it provides so much utility to the deck, uh, not only because when you have mirror matches, uh, this card can become live. As long as there's a Saber Monster on the field, you can activate this card, which basically steals your opponent's uh, Saber Monsters. It's from either player's graveyard and special summons it. So, a uh, really good card. Um, Gotham's E-Call is just so good right now. Um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. It special summons your monsters, and it helps you just go for game. So, Next, I run the Solemn Brigade, one Solemn Judgment and double Warning. Um, warning and judgment. Um, the these cards are so good right now, um, just because they're freaking broke. Um, number one, the solemn judgment just negates everything, and the solemn warning just negates any summon. So it's really good. Counters call the haunteds. Counters mirror. Um, counters monster reborns. And uh, yeah. So next, uh, one of the key cards to the deck, trap stun. Um, I know Trap Stun hasn't been seeing a lot of play, especially in Sabres, now that people are running, like, Forbidden Lances there and everything. Um, they'll just go, oh, I summon High and Lay. Okay. I have a Lance face down. I mean, not, I have a Lance in my hand. I should be good. Opponent activates Solemn Warning. Oh, no, what do I do? Nothing, because you can't respond with Forbidden Lance. Now, that's one of the reasons I run Trap Stun. A second reason is, Trap Stun is so much better than Forbidden Lance in so many occasions. Because usually when I Trap Stun, I'm going for a huge play. When I trap stun, if you try and negate it, that's fine. I'll just drop a judgment on you. That's fine. I'll pay half of my life points. But it's totally worth it when you're pushing your game. Um, trap stun is just so good right now. Um, especially in sabers. Especially in sabers when high and lay is just receiving. Uh, it just has so much back row hate and just says no to Starlight Road. Um, your opponent really can't do anything. Um, at best, they can um, just seven tools or use, I don't know, like Dark Bribe and get over it and just get yourself a plus one. So. I mean, Trap Stun's just really nice. Um, overall, I really like it. It's just, it's so good. So, Trap Stun, hooray. Hooray for Trap Stun. And if you're an X-Saber player and you're not running this, you need to, like, seriously die or something. Because Trap Stun is so good. Um, if you're not running Trap Stun, you, like, just seriously, and you just get a backhand yourself. Because Trap Stun, um, it provides so much utility to the deck. Uh, it provides a lot of consistency. Sometimes it can be a dead draw, though, compared to Lance. When, like, Lance is for everything. But, like, if your opponent tries to MST it um, during their turn, and they're like, trying to use Call of the Haunted, um, so they'll, they'll go um, MST, okay, and then they'll target your Trap Stun, and then they'll change Call of the Haunted just to make sure you have no response, and you'll just change Trap Stun on top of it. So then Trap Stun's effect resolves backward, Call of the Haunted has no target, it becomes null and void and for the end of this turn, meaning your opponent can't to summon any monster at all. So it's just really good. And on top of that, um, I don't run Decree in this deck because I've seen I, I've seen the Saber build with Decrees. It does not go well because you do need the traps, but you want to be able to activate the trap during, uh, whenever you can. So you want to be able to control um, when traps can be activated and when they cannot. So Trap Stun is just really good in this uh, situation. And then next, I run two D prisons. Um, I like D prisons. D prisons are really good. Um, it stops the Stardust. Um, if your opponent's like trying to attack for game uh, with like a Stardust or something, you just D prison the monster. Um, overall, it's just really great. Um, it gets around the Lajas, uh, especially like when you use um, when you use cards like MST to try to hit one of their back row. They have no response, so that I mean, they have a response. So they'll just like they'll pitch it with Lajia because it'll probably be like a Solemn Judgment or something. And then they'll attack and you'll, you'll use D-Prison. And they either have to, like, waste their judgment just to get rid of a prison, or attack into it and lose their monster. So, um, D-Prison's just really good overall. Um, just keeping it at two. Might, might take it out. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I mean, it has seen a lot of good plays, but overall, um, sometimes it's just really not good at open with first turn. Because when you just set this and, like, a trap stun, 
um, your opponent's gonna attack, and you're expecting your opponent to attack you with it, like with one of their monsters, and then you activate deep prison, and then that's fine, and then when it's your draw phase, you activate the trap stun. Usually that's how I play, but like sometimes my opponent opens with heavy, so then that deep prison becomes like a complete, a complete failure. So, um, yeah, deep prison, just really good card overall. I mean. Uh, one reinforced truth for that postural summon. Uh, really no explanation. Your opponent tries to MST. You just chain it. They waste their MST. So, uh, one torrential and one dust shoot. Um, torrential and dust shoot. Uh, pretty much the best stable combination right now in the current meta. Um, because trap dust shoot just it nags your opponent first turn, and it basically says no to that draw that they need. And not only that, um, you show them your hand, and then I mean they show you their hand, and you get to predict what moves they're gonna make that you can counter. So, um, that's pretty much it for the main build of my sabers. Uh, that's for the main deck. Um, I won't be covering spells, uh, excuse me, I won't be covering side deck or extra deck, uh, for now. Um, because, I, you know, I've noticed a lot of people have been sort of ripping off my, uh, off my videos. So, I've decided that, um, I will not be posting up my side deck and or extra deck for, uh, certain reasons, so... Um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, then feel free to just PM me or something. Um, aside from that, uh, JCT from Team Execution signing out.